How's it going guys? Random Gun over here. I think today is a good day to show you this little trick I just came up with, as well as introducing you to my latest project. So the backstory is once upon a time when I was just getting into guns, didn't know a whole lot about them, didn't have much foresight about what I was going to need it for after this, but I got invited to go on a hunting trip and I needed a bolt action. I chose 308 and there was the possibility of having follow-up shots, so I wanted something with a smooth action. But like I said, I was young and dumb. I Those were my only requirements. So I went to Cabela's, picked up this guy right here. If I could quit shaking. It was, I picked it up. It was one of the first ones I picked up. It had a smooth action. It was light. I, I liked it. Boom, let's do it. Didn't Didn't think a whole lot about it. So because I was not into any sort of long range shooting at the time, something I did not take into consideration is that this is the factory barrel. You can see, well, it actually sits about like this in the receiver. And so once you take off that muzzle brake, there's an eight inch difference. It's a much lighter profile. So to give Savage credit, this has been a very, very accurate barrel. I, with my old reloads, out of this barrel, I was easily MOA. This was a fantastic barrel. Uh, so not a knock on Savage at all. However, because it's uh, only 18 inches and I didn't want to come up with just these crazy high pressure loads, I was not getting great velocities out of my 168 grain boat tail hollow points here. It was like I was throwing a rock down range. So to get more velocity, I decided to go with a 26 inch barrel and because I want to be as accurate as I can this thing is absolutely gigantic it's the biggest barrel I could fit into this receiver and I actually had to modify the stock to make it fit so that said now that I have this new barrel in I need to work up new a new load for said barrel so obviously this is just a review for most of you but when the bullet is in the chamber it needs to be in just the right spot if you have it the bullet itself too far into the chamber you have a pressure spike when you fire because it's already pushing against the rifling if you have it too far back the bullet off the the walls of the chamber or i guess out of the rifling rather then it can cause accuracy issues because it's having to jump into the rifling so you want it to be in just the right spot it's not to say that you want it to be touching the rifling but you need to know where the rifling is as a reference so there's tools that you can use to figure out where the o drive of the bullet is that's usually a good reference and tell you how far into the casing you need to set the bullet. However, I don't have that tool and I'm too cheap to buy it. And so to find where the rifling is in this barrel, I came up with something a little bit different. So to try and control as many variables as I could, I measured a bunch of my bullets, the bullet itself. Um, they were as short as one inch, 218 thou, and as long as two in, Jesus Christ, two inch, one inch, 228 thou, I believe. And so what I believed was representative of my group, all the ones I measured, was one inch, 223 thou. And so I went through, found a couple of them that are like that, just, just to have for whatever, and specifically chose this to be the one that I used to measure, uh, measure my overall length off of. So now for the casing, that you're gonna need. Make sure the primer's out. I almost screwed that up my, when I did it. Um, obviously there's no powder in here. And one of the key details is the neck tension. It has to be just right. If it's too loose, when you move it around, do anything, it'll flop around. It's going in the chamber. As you're pulling it out of the chamber, it can throw it off. It can screw up all sorts of things. If it's too tight, then it's gonna be really hard to push because this straightened sort of paperclip is my pushing tool. And if it's too tight, obviously it's gonna cause problems. So this one, I can pretty easily slide it with my fingers. But if I just do this, it's not going anywhere. So it needs to be just the right tension on the neck. So from looking at my other reloads, my old ones with the old barrel, I knew that the bullet is probably gonna be out about like this. And so what I'm going to do is intentionally push it too far in 
like that, way too short. Put it in the chamber with, leave the bolt open and use my paper clip to push through the primer pocket and push that bullet forward until it hits the rifling. All right, here's our short round. Going in, push it forward, get it good and snug against the chamber. This barrel has never been fired, so there's nothing in there. It's nice and clean. But if you have fired your gun before, if there's any grime in there, make sure to clean it out first, or else the grime is going to uh, throw out your measurements. Now that it's in there, you probably can't see that. But anyway, I stick my paper clip in there, go in. Might you kind of have to feel around a little bit for the back of the bullet. This is hard to do with one hand, you know, but you get the point. Okay, so with the paper clip, I was able to push the bullet forward through the case, and I lightly pushed on it, so as soon as it hit the rifling, it stopped. If you sit there and ram it in, you're going to ram it into the rifling, and again, you're going to throw out your measurement. So just push it in slowly, get to a light touch, and stop. Now, if I use a ramrod, for obvious reasons, that's going to throw everything off. So I put the bolt back in, cycle it nice and slow. That was not slow at all. And pull it out gently, holding it down so that the extractor doesn't throw it. I want to slowly grab it. All right, instead of fishing around with it, trying to get it out with one hand, I just took the mag out, pulled it out. But this is exactly how it came out. And this is what we're going to measure for the cartridge overall length. So like I said, I do not have the specialty tool for measuring off the O-Drive, but I, like many of you, have a super basic caliper. And so the cartridge overall length ended up being two inches, 850 thou. Ignore my dying battery. So here you can see my chicken scratch, the notes I wrote to myself for my overall length, given my specific bullet length, and what I decided I want to do for my test loads was 1 thou off, 5 thou, and then 10 thou, all off the rifling. And the links they're in. So this is still our dummy round. But what you could do is, because the neck tension is fairly loose, you could pull it apart, still use the brass, still use the bullet, everything, load it up. And now, when you come to here, to your press, start with it, nice and long, obviously. You run it in. Well, that wasn't supposed to get stuck. But anyway, you measure it. Just work it in slowly until your overall length gets to where it needs to be. I'm stupid. It didn't get stuck. It fell in, but you get the point. But like I was saying, since we don't have the tool to measure off of the O-Drive, all we have to work with is the overall length. But with the die here, obviously, you just work this in. Shorten it up over and over, trial and error, until you finally get to the right length. Just measuring the overall length with your calipers. Now, I haven't really elaborated too far into this yet, but the point of measuring the individual specific bullet at, you know, the one I picked to be the representative is 1 inch 223 thou, is so that next time, if I can't find one that is that exact length, not exactly the same, I, I'm not concerned about where the tip of the bullet is. I'm concerned about where the O-Drive meets the rifling. And so next time, if, you know, the closest thing I can find is 1 inch 225 thou, all I have to do is change my overall length of my test cartridge when I'm getting the die set, change that by 2 thou. And so instead of my overall length being 2 inch 850, I would do 2 inch 852. And so I can adjust from there so that then the O-Drive is where it needs to be. Anyway, it's a little bit ghetto and I could definitely see the argument. I don't know if it's true, but I could see the argument that it wouldn't be as accurate as using the specific tool. But if you don't have the tool, don't wanna spend the money on it, or if you're like me, I am test firing these in like two days. I don't have time to get the tool. No, I've got a schedule, test firing this weekend, hopefully test firing again the next weekend in the competition area for that. I don't have time to wait for, for the tool. So if you need to get by, I think this will work.
So anyway, hope to get back to you soon on the actual results. Get back to you with the results of my testing, uh, some accuracy, and then we will continue the load development and uh, try and get the best accuracy we possibly can out of this. Hopefully turn into a nice competition rig. So anyway, see you guys next time.